difficulty climbing the stairs. With a positive case of COVID-19. He was coughing and could not get a breath. One man's lungs were filled with fluid. Frightening to see him that gasping and that, like, I cannot get a breath. My time was up. Now see his miraculous recovery. God had given me a report that he was going to raise me up, and I stood on that. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. I'm so glad you can join us. Well, COVID-19, the invisible enemy, has infiltrated the White House. And now Vice President Pence is keeping his distance from others after his press secretary was infected. Also, three task force members have possibly been exposed to COVID-19 and are self-isolating. What new safeguards are now being put in place to protect the president and vice president? Dale Hurd has the story. Trump administration officials say Vice President Mike Pence will be at the White House today. Despite an earlier report, he would be working from home and self-isolating after an aide tested positive for the coronavirus last week. The vice president is expected at the White House, but the administration says Pence is voluntarily keeping his distance from other people. He's repeatedly tested negative for COVID-19 since his exposure. Both the president's personal valet and the vice president's press secretary, Katie Miller, have tested positive for coronavirus. And in the past week, President Trump has had contact with both. Now, the Navy's top admiral and three key members of the coronavirus task force are self-isolating or working from home after possible exposure to COVID-19. Dr. Anthony Fauci, CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield, and FDA Commissioner Dr. Stephen Hahn. All are considered at relatively low risk for infection. Will you and other White House staffers be following their example? Well, we'll take the advice of the White House Medical Unit, which is the best in the business. Um, there may be, I don't want to rule anything in or rule anything out. It is scary to go to work. You know, it's a, it's a small, crowded place. It, it's, you know, it's a little bit risky, but, but you have to do it because you have to serve your country. Among new White House guidelines, testing anyone who sees the president. The White House is also asking more staff members to work from home and beginning more rigorous screening of anyone who enters the White House grounds. Chief of Staff Mark Meadows says enough is being done to protect the president. I can tell you this is probably the safest place uh, that you can come to. The White House has already instituted daily coronavirus tests for the president and vice president and for those closest to the president. After Pence's press secretary tested positive, President Trump said he was not worried about the virus spreading in the White House. Nonetheless, officials are stepping up safety protocols. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, I hope you take this as an advisement to step up your own safety protocols. Realize we don't know the ultimate effect of this vi virus. All kinds of reports are coming in of people with uh, lung damage from it. Others are saying it can lead to strokes, even in the young. Uh, we need to protect ourselves, and there's a scary report coming out of South Korea that they're looking at another wave of infection there. So please exercise caution. Please follow the guidelines, uh, and you don't want to have any part of this virus. In other news, many people across the country are already headed back to work in spite of concerns about a second wave of the coronavirus. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN newsroom. Ephraim. Gordon, in some states, people are back on the job, even in defiance of state orders, like 77-year-old Michigan Barbara Carl Mankey. I had this business for 60 years, almost 60, 59 years, and I have no intentions of leaving it under these conditions at all. Police have cited Mankey repeatedly, but he is standing his ground, saying he'll be open until Jesus walks in or he's arrested. Mankey is just one of many who say they need to get back to work, a theme of Trump administration officials as well. And governors are working on ways to open states safely, even as the White House says most of the layoffs are temporary, but the recovery will not happen right away. It's going to take a while. Uh, for the reopening to have an impact. It's a risk if we don't do anything. It's a risk if we, if we do this. Um, what we have done is come up with the best practices uh, for businesses to reopen. 
Still, the Treasury Secretary acknowledges the nation's unemployment rate could hit about 25 percent, as bad as the Great Depression, before the economy turns around. Former President Barack Obama is facing criticism for his attack on the Justice Department's decision to drop its prosecution of former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The department dropped the case after reviewing newly disclosed FBI emails and notes. Prosecutors say agents should have never even interviewed Flynn in the Russia collusion investigation. President Obama called the department's action unprecedented. There is no precedent that anybody can find for someone who's been charged with perjury just getting off scot-free. You begin to get worried that our basic understanding of, of rule of law is, uh, is at risk. Flynn was charged with lying to the FBI. Meanwhile, critics are replying to the former president. Liberal law professor Jonathan Turley points out Flynn was not charged with perjury. And he said the Justice Department has dismissed cases in the past, including the Stevens case. That was requested by President Obama's own attorney general, Eric Holder, for the same reason misconduct by prosecutors. It was done before the same judge, Judge Sullivan. How is that for precedent? More revelations are expected about the Russia investigation in the weeks ahead. Putting sensors on human beings, including children, in order to make sure they stay far enough apart. That was one idea for dealing with COVID-19, and it came from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Chris Mitchell brings us the story now from Jerusalem. In a recent speech, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel is developing technology to fight COVID-19. Technology that we haven't activated until today, technologies that are accepted according to the law, we will activate them. That means maybe new methods that we are currently working on. I also spoke to our technology heads that they would look for all kinds of means that the state of Israel is really good at. One of those technologies would include sensors. There would be one on everyone, every person, every child. First of all, regarding children, there would be a sensor like a car. You get too close, it makes a noise like a buzzer. I don't know if this is possible. We're checking this. We're trying this. But we can, through different means, guard against the transmission of corona. The technology could be compared to what's used in Mobileye for cars that warns about the danger of getting too close to other vehicles or pedestrians. But the prime minister quickly faced criticism. A cyber resilience expert told a major Israeli publication while she understood the idea in theory, it wouldn't work for humans. It would not pass any practical or legal test. Another concern, who would use the information from the censors? During the lockdown, the government also approved digital tracking of phones of those who contracted the coronavirus. Later, Israel's high court said the country needed to pass legislation to regulate such tracking. The controversy came as Israel continues to lift its restrictions. Malls, gyms, and markets are allowed to reopen with temperature checks and social distancing protocols. So far, Israel has had more than 16,000 cases of COVID-19 with around 250 deaths, while the rate of new COVID-19 infections has decreased. But even as things gradually improve here in Israel, it appears that one solution for dealing with the crisis won't be a new system of digital sensors for people. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Turning down to Virginia, where nearly 22,000 residents have tested positive for COVID-19 since the outbreak began, and 769 have died. But at one of the Virginia Beaches area's largest hospitals, the power of prayer is growing strong. Wendy Griffith brings us that story. Nearly every day they come, ranging from a couple to half a dozen people who believe prayer can make a difference in this pandemic. I speak blessing and complete and total restoration in Jesus' name to your great glory, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Scott Gilbert and his team of Firestorm Prayer Warriors have been outside of this Virginia Beach Hospital since before Passover, praying not only against COVID-19 cases, but for the doctors and nurses and really anybody who shows up in need of prayer. 
And so we're out here in the parking lot and the triage nurse, because the triage is out in the parking lot, you don't get to go in the hospitals under anymore. Uh, the triage nurse, she kind of hollers over to me and she says, are you okay? Do you need help? And I said, no, ma'am, we're just praying. And she throws her hands up in the air and she says, well, if you're praying, keep it up. We had doctors sticking their head out of the COVID tent saying, hey, my name's Mike. Could you pray for me by name? Gilbert says there's still a lot of fear among healthcare workers, like this woman who works at a nursing home who showed up planning to visit the ER for extreme anxiety. So I was just able to pray for her and come against the spirit of anxiety. Uh, it completely left. She was crying. She was thankful. We were able to minister to her in some other ways, too. And Gilbert believes miracles will happen. Really, I just want to provoke the body of Christ. Normal Christians, get, you can do this. I'm not special, I'm not a unique anything, but the Lord lives in me and he touches people and he casts spirits out of people and he heals people. Gilbert's martial arts studio has been ordered to close due to COVID and this is how he chose to help. Let's go pray for people. Let's go bring the presence of God. Let's go love people. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Virginia Beach. Ministries across the country have been helping those in need during the coronavirus outbreak. In Chesapeake, Virginia, Joy Ministries, Kingdom World Church, and Mercy Chefs work together to distribute Mother's Day baskets Sunday, serving more than 300 meals to families. CBN's Operation Blessing also provided about 300 cases of water. Social distancing measures were in effect as the meals were given out to people in their cars. This is our 20th annual Mother's Day celebration. We've done it for 20 years. We're usually at a five-star hotel where we're rolling out the red carpet, but today we're rolling out the red to-go bag. So we have to-go meals for moms, single moms, widows, and military wives whose husbands are deployed and their children. In addition, every mother is gonna get a special individually wrapped Mother's Day gift today. And we're just showing them the love of God, letting them know that God loves them and giving them the message the hope of Jesus. Some CBN op and Operation Blessing employees took part along with several graduates from Regent University. And speaking of graduates, like many schools across the country, Regent University held an unprecedented graduation ceremony last Saturday. For the first time in history, Regent's commencement took place virtually because of the COVID-19 crisis. Sean Brown brings us the highlights from the class of 2020. For years, Regent University graduates have walked, even danced across this patio into their futures with family and friends watching. But this year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the graduation ceremony took place virtually. This past Saturday, graduates were celebrated virtually as they watched from their homes. A week prior, each graduate received a box in the mail containing surprises to help them celebrate. The ceremony began with a powerful singing of the national anthem by Joy Wyndham, while honoring those serving on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, including some of the graduates. Spangled. Pat Robertson, founder and chancellor of Regent University, presided over the ceremony. Graduation and our first virtual commencement ceremony in Regent's history. The keynote speaker was internationally renowned author and speaker Eric Metaxas. One of my favorite scripture verses, which uh, I can start with now, is all things work together for good. What could be more uh, well known than that scripture? But do we believe it? I want to challenge you now. Do you believe it? All things work together for good for those that love the Lord. Regent offers 135 degree programs and concentrations in its eight graduate schools and undergraduate program. It has one of the top ranked online bachelor and master's degree programs in the country. This year, an estimated 2,200 undergraduate and graduate degrees were conferred, making the class of 2020 the largest in Regent University's history. Graduate reflections were given by Sabrina Matera Osario Estrella. Dr. Robertson, thank you for instilling us a principle of integrity, for cultivating our spiritual growth. Darwin Muentes received his Bachelor of Science in Marketing degree and says regardless of the circumstances, God still has a plan for them. It is very important that we celebrate um, the monumental achievement that we, we've done. You know, I've worked really hard for my degree 
Um, and so I still want to be celebrated somehow. The graduates were charged to fulfill Regent's mission of Christian leadership to change the world. The Apostle Paul, in writing about the troubles of his time, said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. What are you facing? Well, you're facing a virus that has decimated the economies and the lives of everybody on this globe. The Lord Jesus said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And when you go into this world as our graduates, I want you to know the theme today is you are more than conquerors through him that loved us. A monumental achievement during a monumental time. Congratulations, class of 2020. Gordon. Well, Terry is off today, but Ashley Key is filling in. And Hello. Ashley, I've got to ask you. Yes. Here's Darvin. He's saying we need to be celebrated. What are ways that we can celebrate these 2020 graduates? Well, I think it's also important to keep in mind that it's not just college graduates, but we also need to keep in mind high school graduates. You know, I'm the youth leader at my church, and so there are some high schoolers. And I think just doing, you know, drive-bys, I think that's, you know, a lot of people have been doing that for baby showers and birthdays, but just really making them feel celebrated, because it is, it's a milestone, especially for high school and even college, so... Well, yeah. even kindergarten graduations. I mean, that's right. You we got to celebrate school, the graduates. You know, you know, anyone who's graduating, please take take to, how to think creatively yeah, and, me, yeah. and and do something special for them. Exactly. Because this is a very unusual year. It and, is. And for high schoolers, they're missing out on prom. Uh, they're you know. missing on a lot of milestones, yeah. things that you really look forward to. Yeah. And if it's taken away from you, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're disappointed. Yeah, but God works all things together. Yes, yeah, I heard that. For good. So <laughs> that's what they have to. And we're more than conquerors. Yes, through more the than love conquerors. Of Christ so I think us. celebrating them and encouraging them with that, I think, is important. So, yeah. all right, good stuff. Well, coming up, it's over for you. That's what this man heard whispered in his ear as he battled the coronavirus. How did he survive when he couldn't get his breath? Stay tuned for a double miracle coming up. But first, more fallout from COVID-19. Dozens of countries could face severe famine on an unprecedented scale. What can be done to stop it? Find out after this. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress topper sheets and so much more. For example, you can get body pillows regularly $89.99, only $29.99 with your promo code. With our 60-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America! For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Tomorrow, behind on their bills. Josh kept trying to get jobs, and um, no jobs were coming. And down to their last few dollars. I was stressed out most of the time. See how this couple got a financial miracle. We knew, like, you honor God first, and then... Um, he'll take care of everything else. Twice. Miracles just kept coming. It was a direct answer to prayer. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Well, as a result of the pandemic, millions of people may soon be on the brink of starvation. The United Nations is warning that if countries don't act now, they could face multiple famines. So what can be done to stop that? George Thomas brings us the story. A new study by the United Nations shows an economic fallout that could push half a billion more people into potential famine conditions. Before COVID hit the scene just a few months ago, I'd already been warning leaders around the world, and especially in Europe, that Africa was in a lot of trouble 
and that we could have 2020 be the worst humanitarian crisis since World War II before COVID. David Beasley runs the United Nations World Food Program. His agency says 55 countries at risk right now of severe famine, sub-Saharan Africa potentially being the hardest hit. The program predicted that if current projections remain, the region will be home to half the world's poor. What countries are most at uh, risk right now? In Africa, for example, South Sudan will be Burkina Faso, Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, DRC, just to name a few right off the top. In war-torn Somalia, WFP has deployed plane loads of protective equipment and medical supplies for distribution throughout the country and surrounding region. Food rations are also being delivered on three-wheelers to residents of the capital city, Mogadishu. The food that we used to go to get from the shops is now being delivered to our homes. I'm so happy for this. It has changed many things in my life. For the East, in Nigeria, where 90 percent of the revenues come from oil, the country's poor, struggling to get food on the table. People must eat. I strongly believe that um, hungry is much, much uh, more dangerous than even the, uh, the coronavirus. So we must do our own best to ensure that um, people get food to eat. CBN's Nigeria office preparing to respond distributing face masks, setting up hand-washing stations, and working with the U.S. Embassy there to create a small chlorine manufacturing plant. Several Nigerian churches are also involved in food distributions. We've been in total lockdown for about five weeks, even though the lockdown has been relaxed somewhat, but then a lot of people's businesses have gone down, and so that, that is creating a lot of problems, and churches are stepping in to bridge the gap. Political instability and wars in places like Afghanistan, Syria, Haiti, and Venezuela are also pushing people who were already hanging by a thread over the edge. In battle-scarred Yemen, for example, health workers sounding the alarm as vulnerable children face increased need. We estimate that a, an additional 4 million children are going to slide into poverty as a result of uh, COVID-19. Beasley says lockdowns and sliding economies are making things even harder for the most vulnerable. He warns more people could lose their lives from the economic fallout than from the virus itself. So if we don't have food, the monies we need, supply chain access, we literally could have famine in dozens of countries around the world. This is not a chicken little, the sky is falling. This is the reality that we're facing as we speak. With hundreds of millions across the world already relying heavily on food aid, Beasley says it's critical that countries act now. His group, along with Samaritan's Purse, World Vision, Operation Blessing, and other Christian aid agencies are deploying vital resources to prevent a potential humanitarian catastrophe. If you look at the statistics, you find that the number of people infected with the coronavirus is increasing by the day here. So it's very critical to make sure that that can help mitigate the spread of the virus. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, we've all seen supply chain disruptions here in America. You go to the grocery store and you're literally faced with some empty shelves, but at least we have something to eat. When those supply chain disruptions hit Africa, they won't have anything and they're not food self-sufficient. Most of those countries don't grow enough food to maintain their own populations. They're heavily dependent on imported food. And if those supplies are disrupted because of this virus, well, people are going to be going without food. I'm not just concerned about Africa. I think there's some situations that could develop in India and other Southeast Asian countries who are self-sufficient for food supplies, but with the lockdown, is, is any of that working? So how do we come together? How do we say, let's, let's meet this need and realize the biblical commandment, open your hand wide to the poor, to the needy in the land. In these days, we're a global community. What happens in Africa should concern us all. Uh, let's do our part to make a difference. Ashley? Definitely. Well, coming up, no job, no gas, no money for food. One couple faces a financial knockout. How do they get back on their feet and wind up with more than even before? Plus, hunger in America. You don't have to look far to find it. So who's helping Americans feed their families after this?
in the last year. There were three victims of cybercrime every second. When a criminal has your personal information, they can do all sorts of things in your name. Criminals can use ransomware, spyware, or malware to gain access to information, like your name, your birthday, and even your social security number. That's why Norton and LifeLock are now part of one company, providing an all-in-one membership for your cyber safety that gives you identity theft protection, device security, a VPN for online privacy, and more. And if you have an identity theft problem, we'll work to fix it with our million-dollar protection package. There are new cyber threats out there every day, so protecting yourself isn't a one-time job, it's an ongoing need. Now is the time to make sure that you have the right plan in place. Don't wait. Norton 360 with LifeLock. Use promo code GET25 to save 25% off your first year and get a free shredder with annual membership. Call now to start your membership or visit lifelock.com slash TV. Attention, Medicare recipients. The Energen One Portable Oxygen Concentrator may now be available at little or no cost to you. Call 800-920-1607 to order yours today. Indigen oxygen concentrators are portable and make oxygen from the air around you. They're light, quiet, and battery operated to go everywhere you go. And we have a full line of portable oxygen units to fit a wide range of budgets. If you're on Medicare, you may even qualify to get your Indigen unit at little or no cost to you. Go back to joining friends for the breakfast special, make spending time with the grandkids easier, or start attending your religious services again. Call Indigen now for a free information kit and a free no-obligation consultation on our complete line of affordable portable oxygen products. And anyone on Medicare or with eligible insurance plans may qualify to get an Indigen One at little or no cost. Call 800-920-1607. That's 800-920-1607. Discover the faithfulness of God in this timely DVD from Pat Robertson. Do you need a miracle? Watch true stories of people experiencing God's protection in amazing ways. Discover the immeasurable faithfulness of God to conquer fear and find hope in the midst of chaos. Build your faith and be encouraged. Get Do You Need a Miracle? Call now, 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Well, after Stephanie Miranda lost her job, she would hunt for loose change in the grocery store to buy food. Then her husband, Sergio, lost his overtime pay, and he didn't have enough money for gas. Bills piled up, and the final blow came when they had to short sale their house. But the couple didn't stay down for long. Here's how they got back on their feet. We didn't have enough to gas up the car not being able to buy milk. And Stephanie, a few times, found herself in the store looking if she could find loose change down the aisles to see if we could get that next piece of bread. That's what happened to the Mirandas when Stephanie lost her job and Sergio lost his overtime. I just felt ashamed of not being able to provide for my family. Meanwhile, Stephanie racked up some hefty medical bills and the couple ended up with $25,000 of debt. They deferred mortgage payments for as long as they could, but ultimately had to short sale their home. It was really hard to the point we were crying and on our knees. The Mirandas are Christians and had been giving at church for years. The Word of God says in Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Tithing is very important to God because it shows Him that you trust in him. So even though it was hard, they kept giving during these tough times. I wanted us and he wanted us to be obedient. Soon, Sergio got a 20% raise. He says, I can't explain it. And I said, I believe the Lord blessed us because we've been so faithful in our tithing. Shortly after that, he got another promotion, this time, with a 40% raise. Financially, it set us up way above, and we were able to just wipe out the rest of the debt that we had. And it's been great ever since. Today, Sergio makes enough money that Stephanie doesn't have to work. And since they've paid down their debt, they once again own their own home. And now, they give on top of their tithe to CBN. 
we saw that they genuinely had a heart for God's people and to be able to help. And that touches my heart more than anything. Whenever there's a storm or some natural disaster that happens, 700 Club is on the ground assisting people. And that's what it's all about. The Mirandas enjoy sharing the resources God has given them. And they encourage others with money struggles to try giving as well. If you really want to see change, definitely tie. Trust God. Hand them your finances. You give that back to Him, and He'll just blow your mind. And here's the scripture for it. You find it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. When you resolve that you're going to do it God's way, you're going to run your household, you're going to run your life, you're going to run your finances His way. When you do that, then all these blessings shall overtake you. They will overcome you. It will be more than you can possibly contain because that's the promise. He will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't contain. For Sergio and Stephanie, you saw how, how desperate it got. Can you imagine going through a grocery store looking for loose change on the floor so that you have enough money that you can buy some food? Well, that's where they were, but then they made a, a decision. We're going to tithe, and not a one-time thing. We're going to do it faithfully. And when you do it faithfully, that's when the blessings come, and they come in abundance, and they overtake you. So resolve today, regardless of what's going on in the world today, you are going to observe what God tells you to do. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Ashley? Amen. Well, hunger in America. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, you don't have to look far to find it. More than 33 million Americans are unemployed right now. No wonder food pantries are overwhelmed and cars line up in parking lots for food distributions. For single parents, the need is even greater. Since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak, many churches have reached out to their communities to find out how they can help in this difficult time. Operation Blessing partner New Life Church in Virginia is distributing food and supplies to those in need. We're here to answer the cry of the community. When we hear it and we're listening, the church should be always listening to what is the community asking for. If it wasn't for Operation Blessing, I could not answer the cry of the community. It has been more difficult now because I'm a single mother and I need additional help. These bags contain canned goods and other non-perishables, plus milk, meat, and more. Pretty much everything a family needs to keep them going during a difficult time. The volunteers keep their distance from each other and those in need by placing food and supplies directly into their cars while the pastor talks and prays with people. This is our family that we're serving. And right now is when a nation needs you the most. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say enough. We need everything that we can get, and this truly has been a blessing and a support for my family. Well, if you're sitting at home and you're praying and asking God, how can I help during this time of need, during this unprecedented time, this is how you can do it. By joining the 700 Club, a portion of your gift goes to Operation Blessing and helps um, you know, provide resources for these outreaches to help single parents and those who are struggling because they simply don't have a job. So I encourage you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Join the 700 Club. There's different levels that you can join at. You can be the 700 Club uh, that's $20 a month month, the gold, $40 a month, and whatever level you join at, we will give you Pat's latest teaching, which is a DVD, Do You Need a Miracle? I know this is going to ignite your faith. It's stories, incredible miracles that God has performed. And so you get this when you join the 700 Club. I really encourage you to do it. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Gordon? Well, Felix is the single father of three children. COVID-19 has hit his family especially hard. Felix can't work, so he can't buy food. And the lunch program that used to feed his children one meal a day has been shut down. Before COVID came to the Philippines, 10-year-old Joshua was part of an Orphan's Promise daily feeding program in this mountain community. 
Joshua's dad, Felix, is a single parent. He had to travel every day to the city to work. What he earned wasn't enough to feed his three children. So Joshua has been helping out. He carried large sacks of charcoal from the mountain to sell in the market. I bought food for my brothers and sisters. That's how I spent the money I made from selling charcoal. It's really hard work, but I knew I had to help out. When COVID-19 hit, everything came to a stop. Felix was not allowed to travel to the city to work. All feeding programs, like the one supporting Joshua and his friends, were suspended by the government. It's been even harder for us now. Of course, I can't work, so we can't even buy food. Now we boil bananas just to get by and divide one meal portion into four. Because Joshua's family lives in a remote community, they're often the last to receive help from the government. I was losing hope. I just prayed and asked God to keep my kids from getting the virus. So Operation Blessing made the journey back to the mountain with help for Joshua and other families. Instead of group meals for the kids, we brought them food packs filled with rice, canned goods, milk, and other supplies. And we're planning to deliver more food in the weeks ahead. Thank you to the people who help Operation Blessing. And thank you for remembering us and for reaching us, even though we are so far away. I really thank God for you. From food banks here in America, our big 18-wheeler trucks going out, uh, we've seen a 40% increase in demand from all the food banks that Operation Blessing supplies right here in America to a remote village in the Philippines. We are helping people in the middle of this crisis. If you want to be a part of that, it's real easy. All you have to do is call us and say, yes, I want to join. 1-800-700-7000. How much is it to be a member? Well, it's just $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. Some of you can afford to give more. So we've got 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. And realize a portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people and help them very tangibly in their time of need. Now, when you call, ask for a Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. There are no checks to write, nothing to mail in. And we save so much on the processing we can send as our gift to you, Power for Life. So you can call and ask for Pledge Express, or you can go to cbn.com slash give when you give monthly on the internet. You automatically are signing up for Pledge Express. We also have something new for all the millennials. You can text us. All you have to do is text CBN to 71777, and you'll go to a landing page on your smartphone that will enable you to give uh, monthly. Either way, do it. And when you call and join, I want you to have this. It's our latest DVD. It's called, Do You Need a Miracle? Well, this DVD is filled with real life examples of modern day miracles that will encourage you and build your faith to believe for your own miracle. Here's a sample of what you'll see. I had just come from traveling out of the country. It felt very unusual. I just started thinking, well, I hope I didn't get into contact with someone that was sick. I felt something in my throat. It was blood. I began to panic. I felt death. My head was about to explode. And I said, call 911. This was the worst case that I've seen. From Pat Robertson, do you need a miracle? Available now. I don't know if there has ever been a time when our nation and the world needed a miracle more than we do right now. Get Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Do You Need a Miracle? In this DVD, you'll discover God's awesome power at work today, featuring incredible true stories of divine intervention. God showed up and he worked miracles. Different doctors would come in. It's like, wow, you're a miracle. I knew God had restored him. We've also gathered teachings that will be especially helpful to you with what we're facing today. Why it's so important to believe God and build our faith. And this program is going to help you do just that. Conquer fear, find hope, and be encouraged. Get Do You Need a Miracle? Yours when you become a CBN partner. 
Call now, 1-800-700-7000, or go to CBN.com. Available now. Still ahead, a man struck down by the coronavirus. I'm getting worse and worse, and I, you know, I can't even breathe. His supernatural rescue. God came in my room this morning at 3 o'clock and blew in my lungs. Coming up on today's 700 Club. I'm healed. I mean, I, I'm totally healed. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge from the folks at Swiss America, and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. Doctors have given a dire diagnosis to world-renowned Christian apologist Ravi Zacharias after a short battle with an aggressive and rare form of cancer in his spine. His daughter Sarah told the ministry staff his oncologist explained there are no further options for treatment and they've done all they can. The family now plans to spend time together. Zacharias is 73 years old. CBN is launching two new social media campaigns in Europe to spread hope during the COVID-19 outbreak. The Fear Not campaign aims to show people they can have hope and confidence that God is still in control in the middle of the chaos, stress, and anxiety of the outbreak. And the new Devo campaign is a series of short devotionals to help encourage and inspire believers in their walk with God during these difficult times. The new campaigns have gotten a positive response from online viewers in Europe. I want to remind you, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to CBN.com international. Gordon and Ashley are back with more of today's 700 Club right after this. Hi, Joe Namath here. And like you, I'm at home staying safe. But I wanted to get this message out. To make these uncertain times a bit easier and safer while at home, Medicare Advantage plans have added new benefits, including telephone appointments with your doctors, in-home aids, home-delivered meals, home-delivered prescriptions, and so much more. But you don't get all the benefits automatically. You need to enroll. The easiest way to enroll is to call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. It's now more important than ever to make sure your Medicare coverage is up to date. We all have a few minutes to make a phone call to focus on our health. Get what you're entitled to. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-256-3200. That's 1-800-256-3200 now. What happened to my money? Whether it got hit by falling stocks and bonds, with the coronavirus, or riding the extreme ups and downs of the stock market. Help protect your financial future now and dial pound 250 and say annuity to receive two free books. These books reveal little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that can protect your money for a lifetime. Get your annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and an annuity rate report. That's right, two books both absolutely free from a leading financial firm, J.D. Melberg. Dial pound 250 and say annuity. Tomorrow behind on their bills. Josh kept trying to get jobs and um, no jobs were coming. And down to their last few dollars. I was stressed out most of the time. See how this couple got a financial miracle. We knew like you honor God first and then um, he'll take care of everything else. Twice. Miracles just kept coming. It was a direct answer to prayer. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. I'm not going to make it. 
That's what Clay Bentley told his wife as he was gasping for breath with coronavirus. Clay also had double pneumonia, but he didn't take his sickness lying down. Clay decided to stand on the word of God. I felt like the devil was telling me my time was up, it was over. He was whispering in my ear that it's over for you. Sunday morning, March 1st, 2020. Clay Bentley sang in a large church choir in Cartersville, Georgia. When he came home that afternoon, his wife Susie could tell he wasn't feeling well. I was thinking with, because of the rheumatoid arthritis, he tends to be, um, he can wear himself out just standing and doing a little bit more um, than the average sitting around day. Things started going downhill. I mean, you know, by the time I went to bed on Sunday night, I mean, I was having dif difficulty climbing the stairs. The next morning, he went to an urgent care to get checked out. They sent him to the emergency room. His oxygen levels were low and he had pneumonia in one lung. The flu test came back negative, so they sent him home with antibiotics. Throughout the week, Clay's condition grew worse. Thursday night got really, really bad. He was coughing and could not get a breath and his eyes were huge and he, he was, uh, I mean, it, it was frightening to see him that gasping and that like, I cannot get a breath and I just feel like I'm, go I'm not gonna make it. And on Friday morning, I called the hospital back and I said, I feel like y'all sent me home to die. I said, I'm getting worse and worse and I, you know, I can't even breathe. Clay was admitted to the hospital and tested positive for COVID-19. He had also developed double pneumonia. Susie was quarantined at home. That week, she and Clay asked friends and family for prayer and stood on the promises in God's word to boost their faith for Clay's recovery. I knew that his word in my mouth made a difference. His word in, in anyone's mouth, his word is more important than just, oh, God, help someone, or oh, God, please help someone. That just, his grace comes into effect there, but his word does not return into him void. So his word is what I just kept having in my mouth. Every healing scripture that I could think of was going through my spirit. I would live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. He has plans for me, a future and a hope and no weapon formed against me can prosper. I was quoting them all out loud. And, and you know, when it got to the point where I couldn't breathe, I couldn't quote them anymore. But I was still quoting the word on the inside of me and I knew within me that God had plans for me, that he didn't want me to lay there and die. He wanted me to stand on the word and he was telling me, stand on the word. The word of God has always worked in my life. He's always proven himself to me to be true. He's never lied to me. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you and I'll never lie to you. So I knew all that. And I knew he wouldn't let me down. And I knew no matter what these doctors said, I, I wouldn't believe in their report that, that, that God had given me a report that he was gonna raise me up and I stood on that. Susie's Facebook page was flooded with responses as people believed in prayer for Clay's recovery. I was up at two o'clock in the morning and I was just literally responding to each one of those. Thank you so very much for your prayers. Please pray for um, improvement for his lungs, for improvement in his lungs. And just giving a very specific of what he needed just to keep moving in the direction that we knew God was leading us in. But I want to talk to you a little bit about some things I had to deal with today. Clay's condition worsened for several days yet he still had peace, believing for a miracle recovery. Then on the night of March 14th, as he struggled for breath, Clay says the presence of God came into his room. So I felt in the spirit like I had a man laying on my chest, and it was so heavy that it was like I couldn't breathe. So this man was laying on my chest, and then all of a sudden he blew air into my lungs. And when he blew air into my lungs, I took a deep breath, and it's like everything uh, just cleared. It's like it all went away and I just lay there in bed from three o'clock to about 6.30, just breathing. I mean, I still had the oxygen, I still had all of that stuff flowing, but it was like so easy. So the doctors came in my room uh, to check on me and they told me, what's up with this? They said, yesterday we come in your room and tell you you're getting worse, that you're in worse shape than you've been since you've been in the hospital. Both your lungs was filled with fluid. And today, you don't have any fluid in your lungs at all. When they tested his lungs, doctors were amazed his oxygen levels were at 95%. Clay told them why. God came in my room this morning at three o'clock and blew in my lungs and, and, and you know, I, I'm healed. I mean, I, I'm totally healed. And he said, well, it, I mean, <laughs> he said, I'm amazed that you're in the condition that you're in. When he was sharing it the first time with me, it just, elated and just it, we were ecstatic it was just like 
you are so good, God. You're so faithful. You are so amazing. And the just joy. It was joy unspeakable. It was awesome. Two days later, Clay was released from the hospital, completely healed. So when the Lord raised me up from coronavirus and healed me of that, not only he healed me of that, but he healed me of the rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I haven't taken any rheumatoid arthritis medication since before I went in the hospital. My joints is like, I mean, they don't even hurt no more. I mean, I'm, I'm just set free. Everything that, everything that was wrong, uh, when Jesus came in, he made it all right. Clay and Susie encourage everyone facing fear and difficulties to turn to Jesus and his word for healing. Whatever the biggest fear is, go ahead and call it out and answer it with the word and see him change your situation. Transforming, absolutely transforming. <laughs> and, and, and I'm here to tell you today that if you'll stand on the Word of God, if you'll put your faith and you'll put your trust in Him, it don't matter how bad it looks, uh, He's the God to turn around and He'll turn things around. He will. What an awesome, amazing story. That encourages me, and I know it has to be encouraging you guys. And what a lesson for us to, and what a good reminder to stand on the Word of God. Even when circumstances show something different, stand on the Word. And even when your symptoms are screaming at you, yes. uh, that's one of the, I mean, the thing that's just coming at me again and again from this story is how do you persevere in faith? Here you are, you, can, you can't even say the scripture anymore. Mm. Your breathing has gotten that bad, but you still believe. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. That kind of faith is what gets God's attention. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be some great big thing. Realize all it is is a mustard seed that just doesn't give up. Amen. From mustard seeds, great plants grow and realize great healings grow, grow from this. Mm -hmm. When you have that kind of faith that perseveres to say, I believe in the word of the Lord. I believe in what Jesus did for me. I believe that by his stripes I am healed. I believe it was taken care of 2,000 years ago. All I need to do is believe for me to receive it. Yeah. That's what that story should underline for you. All the promises of God are yes and amen for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, Ashley and I are going to pray. Before we pray, we've got some other miracles for you just to right. encourage your faith. Faith comes by hearing, and these wonderful testimonies, let them encourage you and build your faith. Faith comes by hearing. It doesn't come by looking at your symptoms or reading doctor's reports. It comes by hearing, and these testimonies are there to encourage you. Here's one from, from Jay. I've had severe asthma my whole life, constantly used an inhaler. My family and I were watching the 700 Club on April 6th, this is just last month. Terry prayed for someone who has a condition where you almost whistle when you breathe. She said, breathe freely. Well, my lungs have felt clear. I haven't used the inhaler since. God bless Terry and <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is from Mary of Spartanburg, South Carolina. She says she suffered from pain in her right shoulder that was so severe she was forced to stop doing things. Mary was watching the 700 Club on April 3rd, 2020, when she heard Gordon mention her by name and a word of knowledge. He said, Mary, you were laying your left hand on your right shoulder. You couldn't move the right shoulder, and God has healed you, and you can move normally. Mary believed God. Her arm was healed, and the pain in her shoulder left. Amen. Let's pray for you and realize God knows your name. Yeah. He numbers every hair on your head. He loves you infinitely, more than you can ever get to the end of. There's no limit to his love. Let's just walk into that love and realize he can heal you in an instant. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we underline Almighty. You are the God who can do all things. With you, we can do all things. But without you, we can do nothing. So stretch forth your hand. Lord, let us hear your voice. Let us see you in action. Stretch forth your hand to heal people now and be with them. There are several. You've got lung conditions and you're listening to this story. You heard the, the praise report about asthma being healed. 
you've got lung congestion, your, your lungs are with fluid, you've got asthma. There are many people with this right now, be yeah. healed. I just proclaim over you a mass miracle that God is powerful. He is almighty. He is able to heal your disease. Take a deep breath, whether it's from COVID or from um, any breathing disorder. Uh, in Jesus' name, be healed, be made whole, breathe normally, breathe easily. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I heard the same exact thing. And I do believe someone is watching with the coronavirus and God is healing you from the lung issues that you're having, double pneumonia, just like that story. Take a deep breath. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Proclaim the good news of the gospel to the doctors, to the nurses that are going to come in and wonder what has happened. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. In this Jesus also name. applies to anyone with COPD, any, any breathing disorder any lung cancer, yeah. any problem in Jesus' mighty name, be healed and be set free from that. Yeah. Someone else, you've fractured your right foot and uh, a couple of bones in that foot have been broken, um, both in the ball of the foot and then there's another one uh, on the outer um, side towards the middle of the right foot. God is healing both of those bones. You're being restored. You just felt something go into your foot. Uh, and God is healing you, setting you free from that now yeah. in Jesus' name. And there's, there's somebody watching with really horrible arthritis in your hands to the point where you can't really move them. God is healing you right now. Just receive it. Begin to move your fingers and begin to do normal things that you were, you were able to do beforehand. Just receive that healing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. You are the miracle worker. You are all powerful. We thank you. Yes. For what you've done today. If you've been touched by God, uh, share in your good report. Let us, let us share in that. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Well, we'll be right back with one email question right after this. You're going to see some amazing real life stories of people who've experienced miracles. There was no brain activity. He had knocked me down, and he was just tearing into my legs. All I saw was flames. We might not get out of this alive. Something far beyond anything I could have ever imagined was happening to me. God showed up, and he worked miracles. The impossible was possible. Do you need a miracle? All right, well, we've got your email questions, and this is from Melinda. Do you ask God every day for the same thing, or do you ask once and let it go? Also, if you have no one to pray with you and to come in agreement, how do you get your prayers answered? God hears your prayers even when you're saying them alone. And in terms of daily prayer, he, he told us to pray for our daily bread. But here's something from Luke 18 that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. It's that persevering prayer, not formula prayer, not ritual prayer, but that prayer with faith that perseveres knowing God will answer. Here's another word. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. I don't know if there has ever been a time when our nation and the world needed a miracle more than we do right now. Get Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Do You Need a Miracle? In this DVD, you'll discover God's awesome power at work today, featuring incredible true stories of divine intervention. God showed up and he worked miracles. Different doctors would come in. It's like, wow, you're a miracle. I knew God had 